In this building, there are super secretive engineers who say they have technology that could turn the $81 billion diamond industry upside down. The round brilliance look a little darker than the other ones. I'm Jenny Avins, a reporter with Quartz, and I've flown to Silicon Valley to meet Jeremy Schultz and Martin Roshizen. They say they can grow a diamond in two weeks that's identical to the ones it takes nature billions of years to create. The way that we actually grow the diamond is we need to, atom by atom, introduce new carbon atoms into this exact same crystal structure. But a diamond is a lot more than just a bunch of atoms. Diamonds are forever. It's become one of the most iconic ways that we express love. And so making them physically identical is not enough. Diamond Foundry has to convince people that lab-grown diamonds are just as romantic and valuable as the natural kind. Do you think consumers will go for it? Like, have you seen anything like this before with synthetics? I don't think it could be as disruptive as, say, a Netflix was to blockbuster video, where, you know, you have a like-for-like -like product and it completely blows it out of the water. That's diamond expert Fazal Chowdhury. He's skeptical that the lab-made diamonds will find a mass market. When you're buying this for uh, the expression of love, it's hard to compete with the fact that the ring on the finger could be older than many of the stars in the night sky. But Diamond Foundry's pitch is more rational than romantic. It's a better choice in every way. The product is better, the environmental and social impact associated with it is better. Mine diamonds come with a social and environmental cost so notorious that it was the subject of a Hollywood movie, Blood Diamond. Not coincidentally, the star of that movie, Leonardo DiCaprio, also happens to be an investor in the diamond foundry. Christ. No more. No more. Given the choice between a sustainably created diamond and a mine diamond in Africa, if you choose the mine diamond in Africa, I mean, that says a lot about you. A diamond is a diamond is a diamond. We took a foundry diamond to Manhattan's diamond district to find out if, in fact, a diamond is a diamond is a diamond. Within a few minutes, a jeweler was able to price it on the spot. Then I told him where it came from. The value drops. How much? I would say half of what I just called it. Why is the value less for man made if the quality is the same? Because it's unnatural. And would you carry man made diamonds? I personally would not. If you were to ask me if I needed a heart transplant, would I rather have a natural heart or a man-made, lab-grown heart? I prefer someone else's natural heart. I think there's more value to it. Along the way, I asked myself the same question. All things equal, would I rather have a natural diamond or a man-made, lab-grown diamond? I love the idea of a natural gemstone, from a speck of stardust, millions of years in the making, and I would rather see my money go to a responsible business in the developing world than to Silicon Valley investors. But when I asked jewelers where exactly their diamonds came from, they couldn't, or wouldn't, tell me. Maybe Diamond Foundry's real innovation will be to force the entire industry to become more transparent. And that would be a beautiful thing. <laughs>